being myself, accepting myself If no one calling me beautiful, I said it myself Yeah, cause it is time that we should face this Doesn't matter if a man is but the two races He could rap both races to the fullest Haters saying otherwise, they evidently clueless I'm biracial and I'm proud Prosecutors are calling it a failed murder-suicide. Macomb County attorneys played a 911 call documenting the moment they say a woman was killed by her husband. The victim was calling for help when she was gunned down. 7 Action News reporter Shelly Childers is here with the emotional reaction in court. Shelly. Yeah, that's right. This call is hard to listen to as Ebony Byram calls first responders for help, saying she and her husband were in an argument and she needs police to help her. Tears in court as a 911 call is played to the public. It's the last moments of Ebony Byram's life. She's heard reaching out for help. It was around 1 a.m. on October 1st, 2016 at this condo in Macomb Township. Police say Ebony is heard telling her husband, Hal Byram, to leave. No, I want you to leave. No, no you won't leave. I'm not leaving. Yeah, you need to leave. No, because I have a On the call, she explains to the dispatcher why she wants her husband gone. We had had a dispute. He wanted to get on his stuff and leave in the middle of the night. He can do this another time. In court, Byram sat listening intently as his wife requested police. On the phone, the dispatcher asks about weapons. Any weapons in the home? It is. Just seconds later, as the 911 call continues. But it's not... It it wasn't in play. There's was no threatening anything. The dispatcher is interrupted by gunfire. Ten shots are heard and then silence. Hello? The call brought tears to family in the courtroom. Hal Byram sat quietly, showing little emotion. You hear nine shots, rapid fire, and then less than a half second, a second shot, or the tenth shot, which is he places in victim's own hand. Byram survived that injury. His wife was hit nine times. She was found dead inside the home. He is charged with first-degree premeditated murder. The judge agreed this case will continue to trial. Now, the victim's teenage son in this case from a previous relationship was at home at the time. We're told he was awake in a different room and did hear those shots. He made a second call to 911. He was uninjured. We will continue to follow this case very closely. Reporting live, Shelly Childers, 7 Action News. Before I get into this, Let's say her name, Ebony Byram, another senseless victim to a deranged emotional Kang. A victim who was on her last straw, who wanted that Kang out of her house, out of her life, and he unalived her. And you can tell in her voice she was tired that this wasn't the first time that she had been there, that she had had to call the police on that man. And for a woman to call the police on her husband, you know she was fed up and sick and tired of that man's behavior and how he's been treating her, of his aggressive actions toward her, toward their property, toward her child. It takes a lot. Before I dive into this Kang, I'm going to be candid because this triggered me a little bit. I recognize the tone in that woman's voice in Sister Ebony's voice. Because at one time I heard that same tone in my wife's voice. At one time, Mrs. Angry Biracial was tired and fed up with me, was tired and fed up with the constant arguing, with us being unhappy and miserable. And even though our situation was a little bit different, she was going through postpartum depression. I talked about this in another video. But still, that tone was the same. And it would break my heart every time I would hear it. Because I knew at that moment our marriage was on very, very thin ice. And that thin ice had tons and tons of cracks in it. And there was literally nothing that was stopping our marriage from falling into that cold water. And when you hear that tone in your wife's voice, in the voice of the woman you love, Men normally do one of two things. If that man truly loves that woman, loves his family, and is a good man, he will give her her space, do some self-reflection, and do whatever it takes to change for the sake of that marriage. Or if you're a coward, like this man, 
you get angry, you become more aggressive, you become desperate, and you act like a typical king, and you become violent. You unalive, you hurt, you harm, you destroy. And like a coward, he didn't want to face the world, he didn't want to face her family, he didn't want to look himself in the fucking mirror. So he tried to unalive himself. This, is, this one is triggering me. Marriage is not easy. Marriage is a struggle. Sometimes marriage could be war, but throughout all the problems, all the arguments, all the fights, at the end of the day, you got to realize you love that woman that you're laying next to. And it doesn't matter if you're wrong or you're right. It's not about being right at all. It's about listening, seeing, and hearing the woman you claim to love and what she is telling you of your actions, of your words that are harming her, that are causing her distress, that are making her feel uncomfortable, that are making her feel unsafe, that are making her feel unloved, that are making her feel insecure. It's your job to listen. It's your job to hear her and listen and change. It's your job to cover her in love, cover her in protection, mentally, physically, spiritually. And as I said before, part of being a man is taking shit. It's taking hits on the chin for the sake of your family. Men and women are different in many ways. And it's our job to understand the difference. It's our job as men to submit as men to that difference. Not fight your wife's emotions. Not fight your wife's insecurities. Not fight your wife's feelings and her fears and her pains. You listen, you submit to them, you cover her and ensure her time and time and time again that everything's going to be okay. And eventually, your wife will trust that. She will trust that. And she will love you for your love and patience and understanding. She will respect you. She will honor you because of that. A lot of these kings are too emotional. A lot of these kings are not worthy to be a husband to anybody yet alone a black woman. A lot of these kings shouldn't be fathers. A lot of these kings belong to the streets and that's where they need to stay. Because being a family man is extremely hard, extremely difficult. It's not an easy task or job. And that's why so many of you fucking kings run from it. That's why so many of you kings fail at it. Because it's hard. It's difficult being a husband, being a father, being a protector, being a maintainer. It's stressful. It's draining. But you do it out of love. And I cannot stand abusive, narcissistic, cowardly pieces of shit like this man. He was given a gift. A man who finds a wife finds a good thing. In Islam, marriage is half of our deen. A good wife is one of the biggest blessings you can ever get. And a lot of these kings don't understand that. They don't realize that they are blessed by God, by Allah, by Yahweh, by whatever you want to call it. To have that woman in your life. To have that woman birth your legacy. This king and men like him are pure fucking cowards. Those kings on those podcasts that bash, degrade, and talk about unaliving black women are pure fucking cowards. They are not worthy of black women. They are not worthy of their children. They are not worthy of the title husband. They are not worthy of the title father. They are just not fucking worthy. And it's a shame his self-deletion was a failed attempt. I have so many unanswered questions